video for I think yesterday when we covered uh, this part. He's ready, he's ready to go away. And uh, we were able to come up with the two boundary conditions that N12, that B2 minus B1 is equal to. So that was after we considered a disk across the boundary of the two uh, media, medium two and medium one. And then we got our N2 roof, N1 roof. And then we got our B1 and medium one. And our B2 in medium two. And we had our DS being the cross sectional area. And the other condition was N12 cross H2 minus H1 would be equal to the surface current JS. But if we got no surface current, then uh, this was after drawing uh, an Amperian loop, A, B, C, D, and with the current moving, or with the loop moving from A, B, C, D, so that A, B, C, D, A becomes our closed curve, or loop, whatever you want. So this is our medium 2 and this is our medium 1 and then we had our N12 from medium 1 to medium 2, the norm direction vector from medium 1 to medium 2 and then we had the tangent, I mean the direction of H2 here and the direction of H1 here. And then we found out this one shows that the tangential components sorry, I've already said that or I've already written that. The tangential components of the magnetic field densities H1 T, the tangential component. The T means tangential component is equal to H2T in the medium two. So the tangential component of, and that's where I used the transformer as an example. And when I use the transformer as an example, uh, our transformer here is, uh, this is just the casing to make sure that things are always in it. And then we got the, uh, to show you that this is iron, it is uh, iron. That's why it is able to be conducted by a magnet. And if you don't believe that it is, it is more strong at the poles than it is at the, uh, at the middle point. So all the magnetism is concentrated at the pole? Oh. At the poles. So here it sticks on, but when I put it in the middle, it goes off. So we got all these pieces of iron, which are, are already removed. I can't remove any further, probably I can try. And try to remove more so that you believe they came out of here. <laughs> no, I want you to believe. I know I got a lot of Thomases here, so I want you to believe. I don't do this because I want you to believe, but I want to show you that physics is real. Some of you still ask questions. Get out. Maybe I use the other side. So they are stuck together. So if I can draw them, these are our E's. 
uh, I showed you the E's. So they are getting these E's and then they make sure they face each other but they don't complete this part. They don't complete this other part. These other parts here are completed by this. And this other part on the other side also is completed by that. So we come up with a, <coughs> a figure of our transformer which is having E's whereby one E is there And then the other E, which is at the other back, ends around. And then these small pieces are put. And then the windings, one winding is here. According to this uh, transformer we are having. So these windings, one of them are here. And then if this is to be the second way, the other windings are on this other side. So these, these ones here act as a way of transferring the field to the other side. And this is how the thing is formed. So the, 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 the reason I'm going back is that I did not really bring out the issue of tangent. I was trying to rush away, so I did not highlight the tangent issue. Meaning that if we are having uh, the surface current, that is if we have a solid, uh, if this iron core is solid, is a metal, is iron and is solid, then when you produce, uh, when you produce, when you produce the changing field here, then it will go straight in there. But as it is going, it will also induce a current. And that current will start flowing through all over here. And this current, because it is changing, because it came from a changing field, it will also create a changing field. And then you have this opposition coming up. And that's why we say that this is the condition and it is not continuous. But when we laminate, when we make these pieces, when we chop them up and chop them up and complete an iron core but whereby the current cannot flow freely to complete the circuit then we would have said that the JS for JS equal to zero then we have a unit. We would get the field which would be created from the other side of the iron core transmitted infinitely <coughs> to the other side without any problem. And that's the reason why we start the things to do in boundary conditions to see how the fields are affected when we are constructing these things. So these things were not constructed out of dreaming. Someone never dreamt and said, let me make a transformer. It was after reading and then look at the principles, after looking at the principles, for example, in mechanics I told you, you can guess. Before the seat belts were made, you can imagine how people struggled to move in their cars. Okay, so I promised you that when a current is induced in these parts, that would lead us to today's section, which is electromagnetic induction. <laughs> They can be separated, but as you can see, when they are wrong here, the field you, you have uh, less uh, less losses. But uh, when you are trying to transfer the field across to the other side. Much as we always draw the other one, we always draw the. We are using our own this type of form. If it is a step down, like the radio, then you find that you have something uh, BS, and then you have here BP.
for Brian. In this being now a tangent Brian, now I'm just. But I prove it this way to make sure you get the feel of the transformer we are now having. Because it is made like this. So that the field which is created within probably if this was to be the primary, which I guess it is because those wires are bigger, we they are going to the, to the source of the supply, and then this one will be the DS. This will be the S. And this looks a step up. Uh, which is not the design which we are looking at. I should have made the ones on top. Uh, or you could have, you can hold it upside down. So you can say this is B, 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 and this is yes. B, yes, not N, N, S, N, this will be B, yes. yes. Sometimes those transformers blow up, like recently, the substation blow up, the transformers. Yeah, if, if these fools who always think they can make money without working go and drill out the oil, <laughs> then, then there is no coolant left. You've had people being electrocuted because they were trying to steal oil. Others are shot by the guards because that oil is believed to be uh, curative. Some use it for burns, others take it to that way to make the golden machines. So when you know thieves don't care. They find your car, take away side mirrors. They don't care how you're going to go home. <laughs> so that's what happens. Well, when, uh, when, it's, when or even if the oil is used up, as in it has been used up and it's no longer there, the heating now becomes too much and it will blow. Any other query about the transformer and it's how it works? Fine. So in 1831, Michael Faraday fidgeted with a couple of experiments and eventually made a couple of observations. So he got a coil, and I'm lucky to have exactly Faraday's coil, which he used. <laughs> this is right. Exactly, we use this one. I had to, to write and they send it for me to make this class special. Uh, from, uh, from Philip, I had to write to them and they had to look for it. So this is the design he used. So he used, but this one is, is a new thing. So he used the a coil, this is about a thousand tons. This one's here. I'll give you a new task, don't worry. Uh, before you leave here, you'll have touched. So when he used the, the coil, he connected it to a galvanometer. So after connecting it to the galvanometer, so I'm going to connect this by making this crocodile hit this part. And then also make sure that so he he made sure that he I mean he got a, a magnet so I have a, I have three magnets I have a very child a baby magnet one which is in kindergarten and one which has reached the university. <coughs> So he got a magnet and tried to push it towards the coil, okay? As he was observing what the moving uh, uh, galvanometer is doing. So you will tell me what happens. Anything happen? So he, he tried to push it, but I'm going to come slow. So I'm going to come slowly and he tells me what happens. Anything happen? I'm going to go out slowly. Something 
So, but I'm going to come quick. I'm going to go out quick. but the sensitivity is now smaller. Even if I come quick, <laughs> still it is slow. So let me bring the baby. It's baby, but it is almost the same size, but smaller. Anything you see? It is there. It is there, but it is small. Very small compared to this huge one. So Faraday did this experiment and after doing this experiment he was excited. After he got excited he made observations. He really felt like he had gotten something very new. And for the first time you've been able to witness that a magnetic field, if you make it cut through a conductor, you are able to produce Okay, so let's observe one other more thing. You tell me where it will go when I go, you know. So, where did it go? Okay, I'm gonna get out. Where did it go? Okay, I'm changing the poles. When I put in the other pole, where did it go? So, where does it go now? Any questions before we go to the... Father the law, we are going to work towards Father the law. Identify one. Michael Faraday or Makai Faraday. Reported a series. Reported a series of experiments. Reported a series of experiments, including three. Including three. Including three that with some violence in history, that with some violence in history can be characterized, can be characterized as follows. The experiments he did, experiment one, he pulled a loop, he pulled a loop of wire to make sure that I keep the let me see whether I can freeze myself. To keep the magnet uh, intact, 
and after keeping the magnet intact, then I move the the coil. So I'm moving the coil. Anything happen? Yes. So when I move the, the the magnet in and out, or move the coil, something happens. Yes. To the right. Through a magnetic field. Holding the loop, 
steam as in figure B here, it is now the number of moments. Again, again the current flow in the loop. Current flow in the loop. And for experiment three, with both, with both the loop and the magnet, both the loop and the magnet are pressed. seen and, and understood now what happened. I got our, first of all, I had a magnet, for example, if we were to use this, I moved it in, a current will float. Moved it out, current float. I hold the magnet static, moved the coil, still the current float. Now, uh, the use of the electromagnet is that I'm not going to have this magnet and change it to this and get the feeling of what happens. Instead, he was using an electromagnet all along. So he could now change the current. If the current was 2 amps, it would give a certain amount of magnetic field. If you change it to 4 amps, then of course the field also will be high and then you get <coughs> uh, more field which will be threading uh, your loop and when you change it, if you try to change it you see that now there is also a current that is flowing we need to note a couple of things not An induced, an induced current is produced if I get the, uh, when I got the coil and I went in slowly and went out slowly, there wasn't much difference. When I left the magnet inside, there was an issue. So for you to have some induction, some activity, there must be some relative motion, either by the magnet or by the coil. So produced when there is, when there is relative motion. When there is no motion, nothing happens. Is 
Is it true? Two. Since you were all laughing. Uh, Mother, you know. Magnitude of induced EMF, the magnitude of induced EMF or current or current is proportional is proportional to not only to not only the magnetic strength to not only the magnetic strength but also the time rate of change of change of the magnetic flux So it wasn't all about just the magnet, that I changed the magnet and then the current became much. It depended also on how the rate which I'm coming in and going up, you have to have some, some good rate. And that is uh, the time rate of change of the magnetic flux. This phenomenon this phenomenon, the phenomenon is called electromagnetic in action. So the induced EMF. The induced EMF is given by <coughs> E induced. I, I normally call this a nice E. Very few of you can write it. Is proportional to the rate of change of the flux, which we call defy the but of course, sometimes you find that this file always is always nicely drawn like that. So it depends on what, as long as you are consistent, I have no problem. Now, you saw me come in and it deflected this way. When I was getting out, it deflected this way. That means my coming in or going now has an implication on the induced EMF. And for that matter, the direction, the direction of the induced, the direction of the induced EMF, which is provided by Provided by Lenz's law, which states that the direction of induced EMF, the direction of induced EMF, is such that. Is such that the magnetic flux is such that the magnetic flux associated associated <coughs> with the current associated with the current generated. Because we generate the current, which now, after flowing through the resistance, gives you an EMF. Generated by it, 
divided by 8 opposes opposes the original opposes the original change of flux change of flux has in the EMF has in the EMF and we can integrate Ilu, our expression for induced EMF, we can now introduce in the uh, Lenz's law such that the induced EMF would be equal to a minus to signify Lenz's law to show that it opposes the change causing it define the T and we have successfully obtained our first beautiful equation. In SI units or in standard international units, the constant of proportionality, the constant of proportionality the constant of proportionality is found the is found to be one but we call in mathematics we call one unity now because we move, when we move the magnet in and magnet out, the field of the magnet produces the current. When you try to change this field, then the current you are producing also produces a field. This field also interacts with the characters of the coin to produce another field. And that field which, uh, which was caused by the induced current also induces another current. And uh, that one we call it, uh, this induced EMF that was due to the induced EMF is called the back EMF. The one which opposes the change that was causing it. The reason why it, or the reason why we got uh, this negative here is due to the induced EMF. The induced EMF is often called back. EMF, especially when you are dealing with what you call electric molars. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, it took ingenuity of Faraday to produce this kind of design, which I don't see in any one of you, uh, any one of us, because we always waste time on Instagram, waste <laughs> time on uh, <laughs> all that stuff and some of you always ask what am I going to use the course for so what I'm doing all these calculations I'm doing these equations so what but this tube here or that fan there is able to rotate because of electromagnetism if there was no electromagnetic induction we wouldn't get the power to come up here and give us light remember when it went the other day we were all in worry. Okay, so these lights here, which you see, is because of electromagnetic induction, which is part of our course. So you should be proud, and you, when you go to your hall of residence or hostel, you should tell those people that 
you are studying real things. Yes, at least we have the light. The physics is able to give the power, yes. Now, as, as that one made is more in that way, after a given period of time, does it, the magnet lose its magnetism? No, it doesn't. The field which will be coming from uh, the other induced EMF cannot be that strong to anagonize the, the alignment of the magnetic dipoles already existing in this one. I was saying that the fan, do you know how the fan works? Yes. Have you ever seen into a fan? Yes. Why? You can kill one in your room. Do you have fans in your room? This one of 35,000. This one with buttons like those of the cassette. It is now seven. Times have changed. We used to buy it at 15k. Our days. And to have a fan was really lucrative. To have a fan and a carpet in your room. Okay, so as I was saying, most people ask, why do I have to study these equations? Why are they bothering us with electronic medicine? And uh, I'm, I'm happy to report that since I started teaching this course, I've never had those stupid questions. Because I try my best to show you that you are not wasting your time here. It's only your mind which will lead you from utilizing the knowledge that you are paying for. Oh, my salary is paid. My payers' grant is paid for. Depends on how ingenuous you are or how innovative you are. So, after someone uh, started electromagnetism, or after Tesla produced AC current, Tesla died a very, very poor man. But you can see how Meme is fetching money from us because of Tesla's invention. So you can still sit down, think so hard, produce something. Some investors will always make money, but don't worry, you will be happy inside your, your heart that you go to get with your money. <laughs> so this one I'm holding is a flashlight. Is a phone charger. Those of you who always hustle around, I have a phone charger which I can carry to my village with all the pins which are, which are compatible with all the phones. It has uh, a radio. It has a siren or alarm. And I can tell people to rescue me anytime if I'm lost on the leg or somewhere. How? I'm gonna mesmerize you now. If I switch on the radio, nothing. If I switch on the flashlight, nothing. Yes. And I, of course, the other part of the uh, chargers are there. So I'm going to now do, move my conductor in a magnetic field. It is built in a recharge your bag, which I'll be charging. So at the moment I stop, it doesn't mean that it will stop lighting or talking. It will still do so for a couple of moments. So I can't miss any program on radio, even when I'm out of town. close a bit so that I do exercise. So you guys who look for gyms, me I do this. <laughs> I do this around the house and as you can see I'm already getting some light. See some light? <laughs> so I, <laughs> I go around the house, run around. <laughs> so I can't get lost. And this is electromagnetic. But you have to be a genius or to have this do with it to combine all these things. Uh, I think I've done enough. 
So I can put, uh, I can call people to, I can signal that I'm in trouble. I can also, I can also, I can also show my displeasure. Like if you were making noise and I do that, you say, what's happening? And of course, the other bit, I think it is a multivibrator, which is the same principle the traffic lights uses. So, <clears throat> just like you see uh, green lighting, then the cars pass, orange lights, they warn, then red lights, they stop. That's how the sequence works. So, the ingenuity is that you make a bunch of LEDs. Instead of having the LEDs in the green, and the LEDs in the orange and the LEDs in the red you see, you normally see these LEDs very small things, even car, uh, car lights nowadays are being transformed from bulbs to, to LEDs because light emitting does consume a little bit lesser electricity <coughs> so the lesser power you use the less you hustle up your dynamo in the car and the less, of course, the fuel you use. Because once the generator, I mean, once the battery has started the car, normally it sits down and it's the dynamo now to produce, and the dynamo depends on the working of the engine. So instead of having these LEDs in a circular form, so you can say BFT, so you arrange your LEDs in my name. Initials, pardon? What do people want to be to be like me? I'm me. So I will have this, then this one orange, I have the F, the legs which are making an F, and then the other one which is making the T. So instead of what the traffic light would have said green, it says B F T. When it comes back to T. And you make your money. And you make your money. So the guy is making a lot of money. He's uh, making them for these restaurants, um, uh, places. And he made one for us. I don't know where it went. We had it. And on open day, we had it on the uh, on the entrance. And it was lighting like we were like in heaven. I think I took a video of it lighting up and uh, giving. It was written on, welcome, 
to physics department. Welcome to <laughs> physics department. I will do that all the time. So I think now we got uh, a good understanding of how far this uh, work has helped us and the experience we are having this good life. So the good life we are enjoying came from the hustle of something. In electromagnetic fields, <laughs> In electromagnetic fields, the field is conservative, the field is conservative, <coughs> and we know that uh, integral E dot dl is equal to Zero. So for time varying for time varying so for time independent fields for time independent fields. E induced is equal to the integral E dot yeah. Okay, I think I'm done with the demos. Now I have to make sure we finish what we came for. So consider the circuit C. Surface C and close in the surface and close in the surface S placed in a magnetic field D. Placed in a magnetic field D. So we are having the, this one here is our closed half C which is involved in this whole surface here. So we are having this surface here, and we are having our curve C, this one. So if I get uh, the field lines which are red in this, So I'm just putting, uh, I'm trying to put these ones in dots just to show that they are creating the surface. Otherwise, you may think if I draw them because the corner must be like they are in the on the way, then you may not really feel how they are emanating a given surface. So I'm making this to be a surface by making sure they end up in this one. And then I have uh, our norm of this surface being angle, and these are moving outwardly like that. And this is our B. So take a small element. Take a small element of area DS. Yes. LB LB in a, in a unit a unit vector a unit vector normal to the surface then the flux then the flux 
threading this kind of surface phi would be the same as what we got a little uh, while ago in the notes that uh, even though over this close curve C or half B that NDS which is equal to integral the same as integral over the surface S be that the S the vector because and this will be our equation three and our equation two equation two was uh, the E in this is equal to integral be that yeah, this was our equation two. I didn't, I did not level it. And this is since, since we said that N helps us to give us a direction of, of DS. <coughs> and, uh, our E nice induced, which is induced EMF, is equal to E integral E dot, yeah, from equation two, Law. 
the integral form of Faraday's law. We can change this line integral into the surface. Okay? Instead of integrating along the curve, along the path, we can now integrate along the surface to see how things are working out. So when we do that, we can only achieve it by using Stokes theorem. So from Stokes theorem, we have that integral e dot dl is equal to integral, we take the curve of e, then we add it dx, the vector. Implying that uh, our integral curve of e that mds would be equal to the other part, this one here. We have just improved this into a surface, which would be equal to this, because this is the rate at which the magnetic field lines are being threaded. So whether you integrate over the surface or over the line, you still have these magnetic field lines threading the surface. So then we have this E minus integral Kali D by Kali T dot F, yes. And we call this one equation phi. Now, for an abelian surface S, for an abelian surface S, that is for some surface S, the integrands, if these are all surfaces S, S, the integrands have to be the ones equal because we are integrating here over the surface, we are integrating over the surface. If these two integrals have to be the same, the other bit is all about integration. So it means the integrands are one which are. It is this which is equal to that. And then we comfortably say that the curve of E would be equal to minus Kali B by Kali T. And we have successfully gotten our equation sets. And this equation sets is the differential form is the differential form of Faraday's You 
losing the identity that the curve of minus grad phi equals zero, then this would imply that E plus Kali A Kali T is equal to minus grad phi. <coughs> Where phi in electrostatics we had it as V. So where phi is the electrostatic potential, in other words, we had that E is equal to minus rad, rad V. We are using, the, instead of V, we are having phi uh, in this section for purposes of just uh, being nice uh, terminologies. Where this potential is a scalar, thus we would get our E being the same as minus rad phi minus kali A by kali T. And this is true for time varying fields. For time varying fields. We not, of course, in uh, electrostatics, we had this being minus plus V when we didn't have any, vari any variation. But when we have variation with the time, then we add this component here. So in electrostatics, in electrostatics, Kali A by Kali T was equal to zero, giving the usual form, giving the usual form of E <coughs> is equal to minus rad V, but here we are using the electrostatic potential to be five. Okay, in the life, especially in the, in the military, they cannot allow you to sit alone and think. If you are a commander in the military, in the barracks, you have the liberty of coming and you just, and then one comes and says, you start making them much without any reason. Because uh, an idle mind is the workshop of the, of the devil. And uh, that one can be explained using electromagnetism. Uh, in electromagnetism, we call it self induction. So if you are like there and then When you develop all those stupid uh, thinkings, then you are having self. If you go to the start here, you identify which means you are telling the right, you know, and you start thinking, then that one we call it. <laughs> So on Monday morning, we shall be able to extrapolate on these two phenomena.